The next speaker of this morning is uh, Divina Bartello from Università degli Studi di Torino. She will talk about some aspects of the anisotropic flare problem. So please. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, um, in this talk, I will talk, uh, I will talk about uh, um, some results uh, that I obtained in collaboration with uh, uh, Gianmarco Canneori, Susanna Terracini and Gianmaria Verzini. And uh, it's a research, let's say, research problem that we carry on um, since uh, more or less um, 10 years. So the, the, the older uh, paper are quite uh, old, the, the paper I will talk about. So the, the, the first studies about this anisotropic problem are due to Gutzwiller. Gutzwiller is a physician that in the 70s um, studied, this, uh, studied this problem as an approximation of a certain uh, quantum mechanical system. A, um, there are three papers that appeared in the, the Journal of Mathematical Physics in which uh, uh, Gutzwiller took into account uh, this potential here that depends on a parameter mu that uh, uh, we assume, and he assumed indeed, uh, that is uh, greater than one. Uh, what is important is that uh, this parameter is positive. Of course, uh, we put just uh, mu greater than one, but uh, otherwise we can put a mu on the second variable, and so uh, it's the same to take mu in a, just in a zero plus infinity or greater than one. So the force that is induced by this potential is not radial because the mu is strictly greater than one. When mu is exactly one, we fall into the Kepler problem, the classical Kepler problem. The system here is a classical mechanical system and in particular, the energy is a conserved quantity. The uh, potential here is uh, not isotropic, but uh, um, uh, is homogeneous of degree minus one, exactly as the, the Newtonian potential, and uh, depends uh, on the angle theta. Uh, and so I call U mu of theta, the potential restricted to S1. The behavior of uh, U of the function U that for good filler is this one, uh, mu has two maxima and two minima in each uh, period. The behavior of this function um, influences the uh, global, uh, the global um, uh, uh, analysis of the dynamical system. Okay, so now I, I would like to enter a little bit more in the details of what happened for this particular anisotropy uh, before passing to more general ones. Just after the works of Gutzwiller, Devane, Robert Devane, um, make uh, um, some uh, wrote some paper about uh, this um, this problem, uh, where um, the um, this uh, fact that uh, I try to summarize in this uh, in this introductory slide uh, are outlined. So. Um, he made a very deep comparison between the Kepler problem and the anisotropic problem, uh, pointing out that in the Kepler problem, so here on the, in the right, on the right, no, it's the left, on the left, in the Kepler problem, what happened is that uh, um, here the picture are for negative energies, okay? What happens on the, on the left is that the its region is circular and uh, orbits uh, appears uh, in families that are uh, families of uh, uh, ellipses when the energy is negative or other conic sections. And each family is linked to a special direction, in this case, this one, um, a special direction in which we have uh, uh, what is called an ejection collision trajectory. That is a rectilinear trajectory that interacts with the singular set that is the origin. Okay, so the particle goes away from the singularity and then touch this, uh, the boundary of the in region and then goes back. Okay, so the orbits appear in, fam in families uh, 
the system is completely integrable and the singularity is well known that uh, can be indeed regularized by what is called the Levi-Civita transformation if uh, when we work in the plane. On the other hand, when also a simple anisotropy is introduced, so also for <coughs> mu small, close to one, the, the East region is no more radial. There are just a few collision ejection orbits that indeed exactly corresponds to maxima and minima of the potential. So here we have four collision ejection orbits. And uh, the orbit structure is completely destroyed. Okay, the, we don't have uh, families of um, families of solutions as in the Kepler problem. In particular, the singularity in this case cannot be regularized, and this is what I will try to explain uh, better in the next uh, slides. The reason of this fact. So. Um, the, the impossibility to regularize this problem has been proved by exactly by Devani, as I was mentioning before. And the study of Devani uh, indeed use, uh, is based on a, a key tool that uh, are the what are, are called the McGee coordinates. The McGee coordinates uh, allows uh, allow Devani to. Um, regularize the system in the sense that the singularity is blown up and is replaced by, um, by a, a co-dimension one manifold that is uh, the manifold R equals zero. Now I will explain a little bit better. So the, the uh, McGee coordinates are indeed uh, not, um, something a little bit more sophisticated than uh, polar coordinates for the position and for the velocity. And uh, the time is rescaled uh, um, in, a, in a way that the singularity is, uh, um, is uh, put to infinity. So the particles indeed never uh, reach uh, uh, the singularity, but just uh, um, indeed virtually reach it at when time goes to infinity. Okay, in these new variables, uh, the the flow can be extended to r equals zero, as is written here. In the new variables, so the the four-dimensional flow is reduced. Uh, to this uh, system that uh, now you see that it is three-dimensional because you have to add the, the energy relation. Mm -hmm. It's already inside the relation of the energy, okay? The variable Z is omitted because it's inside uh, here, okay? So as you can see, this system is no more singular because uh, you don't see any R at the denominator or anything uh, strange. And uh, the, what is important is that uh, R equals zero, it's an invariant set for this system. Indeed, you can see here that if you put R equals zero, the first equation is uh, um, R prime equals zero. And so um, this is an invariant set, okay? And that it, it is called, as I already said, it's called the collision manifold. If we restrict, this system to R equals zero, we indeed find a system in the variables theta and phi here with R equals zero, uh, that is we just have to erase uh, this term here. And uh, we can study, we, we can find the stationary point of this system, okay? That indeed, uh, as you can see here, stationary points are have these forms uh, where theta hat is a critical point of u of the function u, okay? So at the same points that, uh, that I mentioned before. So corresponds to these four points here in the Goodsvillar example, in the Goodsvillar model. If we linearize the system at these critical points, uh, we can determine indeed the, the, um, the um, the dynamical system on the manifold, uh, on the collision manifold. So this is a picture of the collision manifold, what we can uh, easily 
uh, understand uh, using these coordinates uh, is that uh, uh, there are half of the half of the equilibrium points uh, this one this four here are saddles uh, and the other half are divided into attractors and repellers. Um, the nature of the attractor of the or, and of the repellers uh, depends uh, on the parameter mu. Is, if mu is small, that is less than nine, nine over eight, but it's not so important, then the eigenvalues of attractors and repeller are uh, real. Otherwise, uh, they are imaginary imaginary eigenvalues. And so you have oscillations uh, around uh, these points. Okay. What is important of this feature, the reason why I, I made this feature is that uh, if you focus, for example, of, on this saddle that is indeed the same that is here by periodicity, if you focus on this saddle here, you remark that the unstable manifolds of this saddle has two branches that ends, you can prove that ends to two different uh, in two different uh, things, in two different attractors, say. This is the clue uh, remark uh, to understand why this system cannot be regularized. The reason is uh, the, <clears throat> the, the content of a paper on JD of Devani in 1978, uh, and uh, um, I think that to understand this fact, you can just uh, have a look at this picture here. The idea is that you can start from two very close point to the zero direction where the ejection collision exists uh, that admits an ejection collision orbit. So you can take two points, one here and one here, very close, but these two points can have strongly different uh, behavior after passing the origin because the, the trajectory when approaching the singular set lambda equals zero. So I go back for a minute. Uh, this, here you can imagine that you have a third dimension exiting out from the paper, okay, that is R. So when you approach, um, the, the singular boundary, the, the collision manifold near to this point here. So you come from uh, out of the blackboard or the paper, I don't know, you come near to this point, uh, but you don't touch the boundary, okay? Then the flow can follow either this branch or this one here. And so um, Devani proved uh, by this observation and using uh, um, uh, the technique of regularization by surgery, okay, I don't know if you know it, but anyway, it's something very natural, prove that uh, the system cannot be regularized. And the reason is exactly what I say, that you can start from two very close points, but ends into two opposite directions. Always from uh, uh, just looking at this picture here, but in the case new greater than uh, nine over eight, uh, you can uh, deduce uh, the uh, very complex dynamics uh, that uh, this problem can have. The reason is the following here. When you approach still the singular, the singular boundary, the singular, um, uh, the singular manifold, um, near the, the, the saddle point at the theta equals zero, that is uh, coming near the collision like this or like this as before, when mu is, uh, is big, what happens is that your orbit can oscillate as much as you want on the y x, on the vertical axis in this direction or in this direction here. So, this is uh, this behavior indeed. The, um, yes, this is the behavior indeed uh, allows uh, to prove the presence of a symbolic dynamic uh, for uh, uh, for this dynamical system. The symbolic mm, the symbolic dynamic uh, is proved for uh, negative energy 
That means that here you can add, here you can add uh, here's region, the boundary of the Higgs region, and the orbits are the periodic orbits, the set of periodic orbits for which you can prove the, the existence of a symbolic dynamic are periodic orbits that starts from here, then goes here, then bounces here, and then goes back, and then goes back, and so on. Okay. For these sets of periodic orbits, a symbolic dynamic has been already proved by Goods Villard and then formalized by Giovanni. What is a symbolic dynamic? I will explain later with um, a little bit more details. But what is, um, I think, interesting here is, the, is that uh, this, uh, this uh, complex dynamic is proved starting from a set of symbols that is not finite, that is the the set of entire numbers. And that uh, coincide indeed uh, the symbols. Uh, mm, so I, I try to explain. To make a symbolic dynamics means that uh, you have to, um, to create a correspondence uh, between uh, your periodic orbit and uh, a sequence of symbols. The sequence of symbols of a periodic orbit is, is linked, uh, it's not exactly this number, but it's linked uh, to the intersection with the vertical axis. This is why this, uh, the set of symbols cannot be finite, because uh, uh, if you are very, as um, here, let's go back here, if you pass very close to the to the boundary, to the to, to the r to the set r equals zero, you can make all the spiral that you want as much as you want. So the symbols are not finite. This is the reason. Okay, so this uh, I made uh, uh, indeed uh, this introduction and this a uh, little bit historical introduction to make you uh, understand how the presence of uh, a parameter mu. Uh, just also a little bit greater than one uh, completely destroys or what is un completely understood uh, in the Kepler problem. So the, uh, how the um, complexity of the system uh, uh, grow, okay? So um, now I need uh, some intermediate results uh, to, to because uh, my, my purpose for this uh, lecture is to uh, talk about uh, a system in which uh, we don't just have one center, but more centers. This is my aim. But before to pass to this problem, I would like to mention some results uh, um, that talk about collisions, so the occurrence, the possibility to obtain collisions uh, when we work in a, an anisotropy uh, context uh, and we fixed uh, uh, two points uh, and we want to connect these two points with minimal arcs. So we still deal uh, with uh, homogeneous potential, but now I allow the degree of the homogeneity varies in zero to so the uh, degrees of the Kepperian potential and of Goodswiller potential two is alpha equal one. We make alpha, uh, we let alpha vary. Uh, our potential is uh, um, uh, singular at the origin. And so this uh, V of X over absolute value of X is the potential U that we used before. But now, uh, the potential you can have also strange forms. What is important, so it, this is uh, just an example of uh, his region. The his region, we just uh, know that it is, uh, it is uh, a star-shaped uh, domain. Um, but what uh, is important for our, um, for our construction is that you, uh, must have a strict minimum. We need a strict minimum. Of course, good spiller potential F. So it's not a problem. But we need at least one strict minimum. In this setting, 
uh, indeed, we can also allow perturbation of this potential, and you will understand later why the presence of this perturbation is so important. So we allow uh, perturbations, perturb the potential of this form. And um, okay, perturbation is uh, an object that uh, can also be singular, but not, but not too singular, less singular than the potential itself. So the, the main result uh, that um, uh, we obtain about uh, collision is the following, is that uh, if we, as, uh, we assume uh, our uh, hypothesis on the potential, the one that I mentioned, then uh, there exists a threshold for the homogeneity alpha that uh, allows us such that if we take alpha greater than this threshold, uh, then fixed time volts and minimizer are always collisionless. This result is uh, interesting for, for many reasons. The first reason is that uh, uh, the occurrence of collisions uh, is strictly linked for the anisotropic problem, is strictly linked uh, to the anisotropy itself. Why I say this? First of all, because the alpha Kepler problem do not have collisions in both minimizers. So collision can, of course, if you imagine the anisotropy, I think in this way. The anisotropy is something that create uh, an attractive field that is not constant on S1. So in some direction, the field is, is much stronger than in other directions. So imagine so to move a particle from one point to another of the plane, maybe you have to pass uh, zones in which the attraction is very, very high. So maybe you, you have to point in two zones that are close to minima for the potential, for example, and you want to connect them. But to connect them, you have to pass a very high mountain. And this very high mountain force you to pass from the origin. This is the idea of the anisotropic coll the collision situation. So, um, so what, what I, I, I wrote is that anisotropy in some sense forced the collisions, and this is the reason, okay? But anyway, for any potential you, you are sure that you have a threshold over which you don't have collisions, okay? And this threshold alpha, is always in zero two. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, here was also another remark that, that I don't think is um, it's difficult to understand if you don't, don't work exactly in this uh, subject. Uh, in, the remark is the following. This threshold is uh, strictly connected uh, to this, this. So when alpha is exactly, exactly equals to this threshold, um, the dynamical system admits uh, zero energy entire solutions so that are parabolic solutions. This is uh, uh, also proved in this paper with Jean Maria. And but what uh, indeed is uh, I think could be much more clear is uh, the last remark that I show you also, uh, always on this picture here. The last remark say this. Uh, when you make alpha uh, bearing, what can happen is that maybe for some value of alpha, you have this uh, heteroclinic connection here. For other values of, of alpha, you have this heteroclinic connection here. So for a threshold, you have some monotonicity. Mm -hmm. okay. You have some monotonicity on some uh, objects then this implies the existence of a saddle-saddle connection here. And the, the saddle-saddle connection appears exactly for the threshold of the value. So this threshold of the value that uh, gives us uh, above the absence of collision on the threshold, the presence of parabolic motion, indeed in the dynamical system restricted to the collision manifold correspond to a saddle-saddle connection, okay? So, but what now I have to, 
remember is that uh, given any anisotropy that, that meets a global, um, yes, a global strict global minimizer, there exists a threshold alpha bar such that uh, for alpha greater than alpha bar, any fixed time while some easy miles are collisionless. This is what this is what I need to make the next construction. In the okay, this nice. So the the next construction I would like to show you is uh, um, the end center problem, but in which each center is an isotropic. The end center problem classical and center problem has been uh, widely studied. In particular, the two centers problem is integrable. Uh, Why for n equal three, there are many results uh, uh, from Bolotin uh, to um, recent papers by Boscaggini and Ambrosio Terracini um, that uh, study uh, both the uh, non-integrability of the system and uh, some qualitative behavior of spatial orbits of the system. But uh, um, for us, okay, these are the papers that we wrote with Gianmarco, but uh, for us, uh, the system that uh, we are um, studying is the following. We take negative energy, so bounded trajectories, uh, we assume that each center has an, um, an uh, non-radial attractive force. Uh, so this is not constant, this part here. And we order the center in such a way that the first center is uh, uh, the one with the homogeneity uh, smaller in absolute value. So here the... Um, all, uh, to study this system, of course, is a complex dynamics, uh, but uh, I think that uh, uh, to understand the study of this system, you have uh, to understand uh, this fact here. If you, so you have a finite number of centers, uh, so they can be confined to a ball. Then if you go very far away from this ball, what you see is simply, is really simply a an anisotropic Kepler problem. So this is the this is the core of this uh, research, I think. You see, just an anisotropic Kepler problem, and so you can use what we already know about it. So just uh, a remark: I said that the, the the energy is negative. Then, so negative. Uh, negative energy, I know, bounded in, in the region, Niels region. But now I'm saying that I want to go very far away from the center. Maybe it's not possible in this bounded Niels region. So this is the reason why all our results holds for sufficiently small negative energy. Okay, small in absolute value. Okay, so. What we do in this uh, setting is to construct a set of periodic orbit that have a symbolic dynamic. This is what we are going to do. This, uh, okay, I have to say that uh, um, this kind of uh, structure has been already implemented for the um, Keplerian, uh, Keplerian center, for N Keplerian centers by Nicola Soale, Soave and Susanna Terracini. But as we will see at the end, uh, the presence of these anisotropies allows us to obtain a symbolic dynamic uh, for any number of centers, differently from uh, the Keplerian case. Okay, so now I will, we will find this. So let's go on. The idea is, um, it, it uh, seems very simple, indeed, maybe it is, I don't know. Uh, the idea is the following is to, so here you have a ball with the center, very small ball with the center. Then you construct a greater ball here uh, in such a way that uh, out of this, either, uh, this uh, uh, great ball, you just see a perturbation of uh, an anisotropic potential. Mm -hmm. So you see a perturbation of an anisotropic potential, and so you construct outer arcs, uh, I will detail a little bit better, and inner arcs, uh, 
and then you glue them. This is the structure to obtain periodic orbits. So there are three steps, out, in, and gluing. The outer arcs, as I said, the, the, structure, the, um, the structure is a perturbation argument. You put on the center in a very small ball, in a very small ball, and you reduce the system to a perturbed anisotropic minus alpha Kepler problem. You know that this kind of problem admits a straight solution, straight solution, or it's not correct because it's a perturbation. So admits perturbed straight solutions here in correspondence of minimal directions. That's why I need the minimal, okay, for the outer uh, dynamics. And what we can prove is that if epsilon, so the radius of this ball here is small enough, uh, there exists a neighborhood of this direction for which I can choose pairs of points here to construct outer arcs. These outer arcs are unique indeed, they fix the two points and are smooth and depend in a smooth way on the boundary conditions. So once, but this is important, small epsilon, small epsilon corresponds to small h, to small energy. There is a scaling behind. Inner arcs. Inner arcs means that we want to take now two points on this uh, far boundary and connect them with an arc. An arc that pass close to the centers. So to impose to the arc to pass among the centers, we impose a topological constraints. The topological constraint consists in separating the centers into two subsets that are non-trivial, both non-trivial. So we need at least two centers to make this. Okay, one, one. Okay, and also here we prove that for epsilon sufficiently small, so we have another bound on the energy, we impose another bound on the energy, for any pair of points in two different or same, doesn't change. So two different points in neighborhoods of minimal direction for the other potential, okay? There exists an arc, oh no, I wrote unique, sorry, it's not unique. It was just a copy and paste. An inner arc connected these two points, okay? In particular, this arc will be collisionless if alpha is greater for a, sorry for any center the corresponding homogeneity is greater than the alpha bar that we found before. So this mini, minimal alpha can collide with some center, so will be on the boundary on this set where we minimize we minimize or can be conditionless if we make this requirement. Last step is gluing together these arcs. So we have an outer arc here. I refer to the picture, our inner arc here. We want to have C1 gluing here, okay? The C1 gluing here is not, is not indeed trivial and uh, uh, it took some, uh, some time to prove it because um, to do this, uh, um, we needed uh, uh, some uh, deep knowledge of how this inner arc enter near the, and goes to the centers. So this is the content of the first paper with Gianmarco. So here is very summarized, but the idea is that this inner arc here always goes with a velocity like this and never like that. This is the, the very summing up. And so the idea is that if you look for minimizers, for you is when you are in this situation, this situation that is not good for us, of course, when you are in this situation, situation, you can always, let's say, cut here 
your orbit passing in a smooth way here. This is the idea behind, okay? So once we have constructed our orbits, our aim, and in two minutes I finish, our aim uh, was to uh, construct a, a symbolic dynamic for the system. And this is the, the construction. So we fixed an, an energy level, negative, maybe very close to zero if you obtain these orbits. We prove the existence of a family of periodic orbits that are, I call the pi h because it depends on the energy, of course. These orbits, I know that are collision free in this case, otherwise they can have collisions, but it's not really a problem for us because, okay, indeed, there is uh, something behind this. Uh, there is something more, okay, there is a lot to say about collision, but uh, what is important to say that collisions are isolated. And so if they are isolated, uh, Indeed, also if you have a collision minimizer, then it is a classical solution except a finite number of points. So by means of this set of solution, we can show that our anisot N anisotropic center problem admits a symbolic dynamic in this way. Any orbit is composed by K internal arcs and K external arcs by what we have said. With uh, K is a number that we can choose. We, we can make every construction we want. And each of these arc can be described by a word of K symbols chosen in a good alphabet. The alphabet, who is this alphabet? Now I will... Uh, uh, I will explain you this, but when we can associate, associate to each orbit a, a word, a periodic word, a periodic word, then the game is done because we define a switchable Poincare map, first return map on this orbit. This is very simple because it is very easy. So, okay, where are the orbits here? So the first return map of this point is uh, this point here, okay? Okay, so we define a Poincare map. We define a projection by into the space of symbol. We prove, this is not completely trivial, but we prove that this projection is surjective is a subjective projection. Okay, it's a projection, so it's subjective. Then we put on the set of symbol the on the set of sequences the shift, the map, and we show that this diagram is, comm is commutative. This means to prove that the system admits a symbolic dynamic. The the last uh, um, slide that I want to show it, you is um, explain who is this set of symbols. This set of symbols, and this is strongly different from the isotropic case. The set of symbol is the set of minimal configuration. Simply the set of minimal configuration. If uh, you leave alpha. Uh, the alpha j the homogeneities uh, to move where you want, where they want. So you don't ask anything about collision. The set of symbols are simply the external direction, okay? The external arcs, the external direction. In this case, uh, we need uh, at least uh, two symbols. So m must be greater, greater than two mm, to have uh, to have sequences of zero one is in this case, and you need anyway two centers. So just with two centers, we constructed a symbolic dynamic in this situation that can be can have collision. It's a collision symbolic dynamic. Otherwise. If you don't uh, want collisions, uh, and so you ask that the homogeneity is big, the set of symbols uh, are pairs of partitions, external directions. So each pair 
internal external arc in out is uh, um, uh, corresponds uh, to the choice of a partition because here the partition is well determined because you don't have collisions so you are sure that the partition is uh, yes is determined and uh, direction for the external arc so in this case uh, you just need uh, the two the two uh, centers and just one so if you ask that alpha is great enough, uh, is great for each center, the homogeneity must be great enough, uh, you construct a symbolic dynamic just with two center and one direction. Okay, and the two symbols, uh, just to conclude, and the two symbols are, uh, so you just have one direction here, the two symbols are the internal arc that make like this, uh, and the internal arc would make like this around the two different, uh, the, two, the two centers, okay? So the complexity that uh, we found uh, in the anisotropic Kepler problem, uh, different from the Kepler problem, you, you can also find it uh, in this uh, setting of uh, different centers. Thank you, I finish here.